Hey everyone, Javi Sai here. Today I want to share my experience in setting up a recirculating skimmer and what I've learned from the process. Let's start from the beginning. As most of you watching probably already know, the data shows that having a higher pH in your reef tank promotes faster coral growth. The reason why I decided to pursue a method of increasing my pH is that my Prophylux Aquarium controller was showing that my pH was dropping as low as 7.8 or 7.9 at night. Prior to installing the controller on my reef tank, I'd always measured my pH during the daytime. But as you can see from the pH curves from the Prophylux, the pH swings up and down significantly during a 24 hour period, peaking right before the lights go out and bottoming out right before the light goes back on. This makes sense because when the lights are on, certain photosynthetic activities in our reef tank pulls CO2 out of the water. Anyways, because I was typically measuring pH during the daytime, I was getting a false sense of where my pH was at. Ultimately, this information triggered my decision to install a recirculating CO2 scrubber to my protein skimmer. For those of you who don't know what a CO2 scrubber is, it's exactly what it sounds like. Air passes through the scrubber and the media scrubs out CO2 from the air. One conventional way to install a CO2 scrubber is to attach it in front of the air inlet on your protein skimmer. This will remove some of the CO2 from the air before entering the skimmer, which then introduces that air to the tank in form of tiny bubbles. This concept works and many people have success increasing their pH with this method. A recirculating skimmer, however, takes this one step further. The recirculating configuration works in that instead of just expelling the air output of the skimmer directly into the room, the output of the skimmer gets fed back into the scrubber instead, which then gets fed back into the skimmer. This creates a so-called closed loop. Essentially, new air is never introduced to the tank uh, but rather air in your tank is constantly being recirculated through your skimmer and scrubber, resulting in CO2 continuously being pulled out of the tank. I incorporated the concept by taking some air tubing from the holes on the top of my skimmer cap and feeding them into the larger air intake of the CO2 scrubber. If you don't have those smaller holes, you can always drill your own holes into the top of the skimmer lid. If gunk becomes a problem, you can always place an additional lid on top of your ordinary skimmer cap and place another tube into that cap. This will help if skimming coming out of the cap is a common problem for you. Ultimately, there's an endless amount of ways you can incorporate this, but the methodology stays the same. After incorporating this, my results were impressive. Within the 24 hour period, I had managed to raise my 7.8 to 8.1 pH levels to around 8.1 to 8.4. I was impressed and thought that I had a working system that would last weeks. Unfortunately, that was not the case. Within about three to four days, the pH was back to its normal levels and I couldn't figure out why. I decided to replace the media and lo and behold, the pH went back up. After studying the scenario more closely, I realized that because I was constantly feeding the scrubber recirculated air from the skimmer, which was humid and saturated with moisture, the media in the scrubber was day by day getting more and more saturated with water. Although some moisture is good for the media in making it more effective at absor absorbing CO2, too much water in the media will stop the absorption process altogether. So I had to figure out what to do in order to keep the media from becoming too saturated with water. Initially, I thought about concepts where I somehow removed the moisture prior from it entering the scrubber. This would have been very cumbersome. Instead, I came up with the idea where instead of recirculating 100% of the air 24 seven, I only recirculated the air during the night when the pH is typically low. And during the day when the pH is already high, I would pump fresh air into the tubes from the inlet of the scrubber. The drier air from the air pump would remove some of the moisture that had built up in the CO2 media, although the air pump and fresh air could be regulated with something more complex like a solenoid valve, this solution proved, it proved itself to be much cheaper as all you need to do is to cut a hole in the tubing and feed fresh air into the air pump 
and regulate when the air pump turns on with the regular timer or your aquarium controller, which in my case is the Proflex 4. In summary, this has worked great for me the past two months. I've been able to keep the pH levels ranging from 8.1 to 8.5 during the day and night, and I would say my alkalinity consumption has increased because of it. If you're interested in taking the concept to the next level, you could combine the air pump with your aquarium controller and regulate when the air pump turns on based on your pH readings so that you can increase or decrease your pH when it falls out of your desired range. Anyways, I hope this video was useful to you guys. Please leave questions or comments below and don't forget to subscribe.